Bonjour, ça va, and welcome. Oh, I mean, hello, hello. Ooh, feeling a bit French today, don't know why. This is The Walking Death. See what they did there? Or uh, Les Morts qui Marchons. Now, uh, this, mo bleh, this mission requires quite a few mods. Uh, oh God, there's the usual RHSs in there. There's... Uh, oh, it uses enhanced movement by default, thank goodness. Oh dear. Uh, let's see what else does it use? The birds and the bees? Les oiseaux et les abeilles. Um, what else? Uh, Warfare TIE EX. Uses a bunch of them. And basically, it's a development of the Altus Frontier. Uh, but this new mission has been created by Boner Lord. Don't don't choose your usernames when you're 12 years old. Eh? So it's a sandboxy mission. Whoa! I already see something on fire. Good. I've got quite a simple weapon. Uh, it does have a story. The, I think it says that the story is. Um, Revealed to you through Intel documents, and there are lots of side quests. But other than that, it's very sandboxy and a development of the Altus Frontier. So, without further ado, let's go and play a bit of it. Where does it want me to go there? Go under the bridge and pick up the Intel. I, I suppose. Go under the bridge and collect your first Intel to get a hint where to find more. But be aware that there are camps on the map, and hidden camps with intels. Not all of them are friendly. So, uh, This scenario has no final mission, just explore and live in the lands of the Walking Death. That's oh, definitely in third person. Ooh. Natty trackies. What am I, Russian? Oh good, there ain't stopping. Self shot. This is my first video in well, over a month. There we go. At last. Right, we'll come back to that. 
Now, let's not forget, we heard somebody uh, playing shitty bang. Oh, cool. Very close to here. Well, uh. impressive. Feeling a bit Frenchy today. Oh, stutter there. I think maybe it's because we were talking about French people last night when we were doing bad film night. Every Saturday night I get together with my chums from London. Well, chums that I knew from London. They're all over the world now. And we watched some bad films together. Uh, last night we watched uh, Hard Target, a Jean-Claude Van Damme film. Uh, what else? Batman... I uh, have trouble remembering which Batman's which. I want to see Batman Forever. Uh, the one with Danny DeVito as a penguin. Quite a good one. That's a... Quite a long way to shoot, isn't it? See if we can pop somebody just well off. Mandy, this cage film, uh, surprisingly good. Discussing uh, French people we knew last night. And oh, we mentioned our great old friend, French Tony. Uh, Tony was an interesting fellow. Uh, we used to give prefixes to people of where we knew several of the same name. I knew quite a few people called Matt, so uh, Matt's all got a prefix. There was that missing Matt, uh, South African Matt, uh, Matt Matt. Um, likewise with uh, Rick's there's advertising Rick, there's Jewish Rick, etc, etc. Uh, Tony's, well, we only knew one Tony. But um, Tony was so French, we had to just call him French Tony. Quite honestly, if we had known another Frenchman called Tony, French Tony would still have been French Tony. He was that blooming French. Uh, Tony was entirely capable of speaking English in a cultured British accent, uh, but he didn't. He spoke in the most incredibly thick French accent, like he was Antoine de Caen. Absolutely loved Tony. 
Uh, the big thing about Tony was uh, he was into kendo. I think he was actually on the French Olympic kendo team. Uh, but um, yeah, Tony's great thing was always encouraging people to come along and join him at his uh, kendo class. Really just an excuse to beat the living daylights out of you with a stick. Oh, is that a hit? It was. Oh, there's three down. Oh, they're going to meet some zombies. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That Tony was particularly of interest. He had a Japanese wife uh, named Yuko. I was um, an expert. Japanese weapons for a uh, large auction house. Super Dipper. Right, that's two down. Actually, have gone down to zombies. Super. Well, I think he actually died to zombies. Also, have to bear in mind that I heard shots coming from the town over there. There are a freak load of zombies coming this way. And we still haven't read the intel note. So yeah, when you know a Frenchman who is massively into kendo, who is married to a Japanese lady who is a weapons expert, they're a fun couple to spend some time with down the pub. Uh, I knew Tony from our role playing club. Hello. Familiar looking rifle. I'll say. Tony, he, he was excellent uh, at role-playing, at Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. I had to have a few sort of big problems with role-playing. Um, I, I can't stand the uh, looking up rule books and everything like that. That's just annoying. It hugely breaks the flow of what's going on. And I find it just annoying. for things. Nambu. Ah. That is odd. 
Right, there were four of them. That's one. That's two. Uh, quite sure. So the fourth go down. Did they get zombieitis and wander off? Possibly. Well, we should get out of here ourselves. Yeah, I can't stand all this looking up broke books and... Uh, but I've got the sword of whatever. Uh, I get a plus two to initiative. Oh, who cares? Just keep the game going. I hate all that stuffing for that. I don't even like um, rolling dice. So, what I used to do when I ran a game was I rolled all the dice in advance. I would sit at home, uh, roll a bunch of dice and write down the results. So I had a big table of dice rolls. So whenever people were coming up to a situation where a dice roll was going to be involved, I already knew what the outcome would be. So I could plan on for the next bit of the game and not have to stop and deal with all that dice rolling rubbish. Rolling to a minimum. In fact, there was even a system I used to play sometimes when um, the guy running the game hadn't turned up or we had a spare week or whatever and we just needed a one night thing, which was my excellent D2 system, otherwise known as Heads or Tails. Uh, we'd come up with a scenario and then you could attempt to do anything at all and everything had a 50 50 chance of coming off. So, Heads or Tails. Quite fun. But the other thing I can't stand about role-playing is the fact that you can sort of play against the, um, the GM rather than play against the game. For instance, on the first week that you play, because it takes so blooming long to roll up and create characters, the GM will absolutely not let you die because it's way too much hassle to roll you another character. So they will do whatever they can to keep you alive. And you can exploit that. Likewise, when you get down to the last couple of weeks of a game, they're absolutely not going to let you die either. And also, most people who run games, well, they make sure you always win. You know, if, if any of you were into role-playing games, have you ever played a game where you lost? Yeah, I find that tedious. But not so when French Tony was running a game. When Tony was running a game, you could die at any time. Uh, Tony was not afraid of that. Uh, he also very much encouraged people to play their characters, not themselves. It's another thing I can't stand, where everyone's character just ends up being a Mary Sue version of themselves. Don't like that. You know, play a character, give yourself some serious limitations. You know, I had a character who was very brave, but very stupid. I everything for stuff, not bad. Uh, right, we have a briefing document. An intel document. Well, goodness, already a week into this outbreak and things have gone belly up, shall we say. We were sent in to help evacuate some corporate personnel and when we got there, the... Oh, when we got the people into the helicopter, they pointed guns at us and left us here to die. Apparently, we knew too much about their messed up experiments. Something called Streloc or whatever. Oh, the rotters. We're heading to Agios Minas in the morning to meet up with another squad we managed to contact on the radio. Turns out, they were stabbed in the back too. Agios Minas, eh? Jackie's Bar. Caravana. It's been so long since uh, 
I've played on Altus, I can't remember where anything is. Post. Skip pro. Hmm. Oh, there. How far is that? Ugh. Yeah, I enjoyed the role playing game, playing a character who was very brave, very strong too, uh, but very stupid. Uh, he would happily run into situations that he couldn't possibly win, because he was that dumb. And that's the fun I find of playing these things, is playing that character successfully. Not ignoring that character's intelligence and thinking, well, I wouldn't run in there. Well, yeah, maybe you wouldn't, but he would. So I very much enjoyed uh, playing under Tony because Tony, oh, you could just die at any point. And Tony wouldn't rule you another character. That was it. You were out of that uh, game. Might be weeks before uh, it was finished, so. And, um, yeah. Sometimes you didn't win. You'd get to the end, and Tony would say, well, tough luck, you all died. Or the bad guy succeeded in his plan, you weren't able to stop him in time. No, no. I like that. So, that's the joy of French Tony. I kind of miss him. It was fun to hang out because, as I probably mentioned before, my wife is Chinese uh, from Taiwan. Uh, if you know anything about the Japanese language, you know the Japanese have got sort of three writing systems: kanji, hiragana, and katakana. Uh, kanji basically means Chinese characters. Uh, kanji is exactly the same as Hanzi, um, how the Chinese write. So, you know, we would be, uh, we would be speaking in English. Uh, my wife didn't speak sufficient Japanese to be able to uh, talk to Yuko in it, and Yuko didn't speak any uh, Chinese, so... They would chat away in English, and if they got stuck on a word, they'd write it down. Because whilst the kanji characters are often pronounced completely differently in Japanese, couldn't read really pronunciation, they are written the same way. And I mean, many, many Japanese words and phrases. It's, they use the, is it Yonmuri? I think it's the older um, pronunciation, which is Chinese pronunciation in a Japanese accent, effectively. Kind of similar how they use uh, Wasaigo. English words get adopted into Japanese. With Japanese pronunciation, they'll be written in hiragana or katakana. Say no, it's hiragana. For I always get hiragana and katakana mixed up. So yeah, television becomes terebi. Knife is knifeu. If you'd like to see something amusing about that, uh, the Chinese Malaysian musician uh, Name Wee 
and he did a song for the Tokyo Olympics called Tokyo Bon. You type Tokyo Bon into the YouTube and you will find that. And the song is well the choruses are in English, the verses are in Japanese, but they're all Japanese wasaigo. So it's like Guguru Google. Toiletto toilet. Chocoretto chocolate and so on. It's a lot of fun. I say name we he's good. His name name we weird one. Well it's because his name is uh, we Meng Chi or We Meng Tzu and that sounds like Meng Tzu the Mandarin word for name so name we hey, he's a heck of a guy oh, he sings in Cantonese, Mandarin, English Malay uh, Hokkien, uh, Japanese I remember my wife being asked uh, when she was attending English classes here. Uh, the teacher asked, Oh, is it common for people in your country to be bilingual? So, <laughs> uh, it, yeah. Uh, my, wife's, my wife spoke a different language to her mother. spoke Mandarin, her mother spoke Minanhua, um, otherwise known as Hokkien, sometimes Blah, Taiwanese. But most people in Taiwan speak well, Mandarin for official things. Uh, there isn't anyone in Taiwan who doesn't speak any Mandarin. Uh, most people speak Mandarin. Uh, most people speak a good chunk of Minanhua, or at least understand it. And because there are quite a few Hakka people there, um, people know about Hakka. Oh, the Hakka are a semi ethnic Chinese group. Uh, they're not actually recognised as one of the what are we up to 53 ethnic minorities of China uh, because they aren't actually an ethnic group as such they're a combination of about three or four different ethnic groups most of which are still extant therefore the Hakka aren't an ethnic group but they were a coherent group of people they were originally plains dwellers who moved to the mountains so they have a strong tradition of horses and stuff. I say. Unusual for mountain people. In fact, um, many China towns around the world are actually founded by and largely populated by Hakka people. Yeah, walking into Chinatown being able to speak Mandarin. Not as much benefit as one might hope. But yeah, are people in your country bilingual? So I think for my wife, English is like her fourth language. when I can parley a bit of Francais, eh? Uh-huh. Now, just because they got betrayed by somebody, don't mean they're friendly. Yeah, I feel it more like a 
do with uh, going to France for a bit. I'm a bit out of practice um, with my French. I'm pretty fluent. Uh, I can still uh, read it just fine and I can watch films in French, so that's not a problem. Less people are from Paris. Brazilians tend to speak really quickly. People from the French countryside, fine. But people from Paris, I just find myself saying parler plus lentement s'il vous plaît all the blasted time. Uh, please speak more slowly. because I haven't really spoken French in a long time I've forgotten some words I really need to go and spend a couple of weeks there to get myself uh, up to speed again that's the thing with languages when you're actually forced to use them you know, go to that country or something, then you pretty quickly find yourself, you know, and because you're immersed in the language, you pick it up very fast. Get rid of that dot. Hmm. Get a feeling I'm going to have to slaughter some people. most dangerous. There's two down. others. again. Right. for 
the gun. Special thank you for the oh, banknotes. Chaff and hate banknotes. Oh gosh, you've got lots of ammo. I might even be able to throw away my muscle magant. Oh gosh. Oh. Surely a lunchbox, not a lunchbox. Good lord. Golf cap. Yeah, we're not wearing that. Uh, I suppose we should um, get about a vest. A fetching shade of green. Uh, let's see. Micro Uzi. Good for you. Oh. Stick a 30 round mag in there. Ow, it's biting. Stick out the bottom. Oh, well done. Yep. Not to worry. I'm a bit weighed down. Whoa! Your quest ends here. Well, it's uh, a nicely short video. So there we go. This is The Walking Death. It is by Boner Lord. <coughs> it is based on the Altus Frontier. That guy's nicking my stuff. Oh, his friend doesn't like it, he's put his gun to his head. How charming. Um, yes, it's an open world sandbox based on the Altus Frontier, which was by Hyphen Torpedo. And yes, it's surprisingly good. It's a nice sandboxy thing, there's a bit of a story to it, there's some side quests. So you're free to play this as a straight survival thing. Uh, it uses Van Dienson's Apocalypse, so obviously there's all the extras that that adds. My goodness me, I've been uh, watching what Van Dienson has been adding to Apocalypse recently, um, which is interesting. More on that in the future. And um, yeah, it's, I, I know a lot of people want something story based. This kind of does that for you. Um, it's sandboxy if you just want to survive and play a fairly standard Ravage with a bit of expansion to it. Here you go. And that'll do for today. Until the very next time, I shall see you... Actually, this is something that people do in YouTube videos all the time. Say, so I'll see you in the next video. I mean, they won't, will they? I, d I won't see you either, but I hope that you may have enjoyed this enough to stick around for another video. Uh, the next one's going to come quite soon. I'm kind of going through a bit of a back catalogue at the moment. So we'll see how I do. Until then, ta-ra.